Chapter 1 Sergeant Buchanan had just arrived at his desk and brought up the video footage from outside the bar the night Lucky Frazier was gunned down. He'd watched the same feed dozens of times in the last few weeks. Each time he watched it, he couldn't shake the feeling that the man in question was his friend. As he played it again, Captain Whitaker stopped by his desk to put some papers on it. He saw the video and stood still, also watching it one more time. How many times you gonna do this? Whitaker asked. Buchanan sighed and shook his head. I don't know. I can't help but feel there's something we're missing. We are. A clear shot of his face. Buchanan nodded, frustrated that they had no leads. It's unbelievable. A crowded bar, an upstairs apartment, shots fired, three men wind up dead, and nobody sees anything. You know what the prevailing opinion of some people in here is? I know. That doesn't make it true, though. No. But it does make one think. <sighs> that it does. You don't think that's Jacob's? Buchanan sighed again, taking a gulp before answering. He thought it might have been Jacob's. It looked like it might have been him, but he didn't want it to be. He'd give anything to not have it be him. You know as well as I do that it's inconclusive. You can't deny that it looks like him. No, I can't. But there's also no clear shot of his face, Buchanan said. Everything is the side, his head's turned, or from behind. Well, you would think from his experience that he'd know how to avoid a camera. Looks like him, walks like him. The clues are there. A lot of people have that kind of haircut. A lot of people walk like that. It's not proof. No. But with the people who were killed, you start putting two and two together, Whitaker said. Sometimes you end up with four. Follow the breadcrumbs. The clues are adding up. Even if that's so, it's all just circumstantial at this point. <laughs> Can't argue there. They watched the entire footage again, one more time. It still had no more answers for them. Listen, I know you don't want it to be him, and I don't either. But you gotta start facing reality that it could be, Whitaker said. I know that, but I also know that if we ever take him in... Whatever evidence we have needs to be locked down and so solid there's absolutely no chance of disputing it. Because with what he's been through, there's a lot of people, including people in this building, who wouldn't blame him a bit for doing it. They'd actually be cheering for him. Whitaker nodded, agreeing with his point. Don't forget the public. They'd sympathize with what he's gone through. Any chance of him escaping on a technicality or a minuscule question of doubt. He could walk. Anything we get has to be a hundred percent. No question. Buchanan leaned back in his chair as he watched the video. And even if we had something that proved that was Brett, there's no gun in his hand, and we don't have pictures of him going up to that room since the cameras are only on the front and side of the building. Well, whoever this guy is, he's walking from the back to the front. So were a lot of people after the shots rang out. Yeah but he's the only one doing it calmly. Buchanan sighed loudly again, hating to think that it was actually Jacobs. Even if the video proved that it was him, they didn't have evidence that linked him as the shooter. If he was going to prove that it was Jacobs, and he wasn't even sure that he wanted to, he was going to have to do a lot more digging. Whitaker tapped a sergeant on the back of the shoulder. Maybe you should pay our old colleague a visit again. Why? Even if he did do it, he's not going to admit to anything. I've talked to him several times since he's left. I haven't gotten anything out of it. Well, you know how it goes. It only takes one time, one slip-up. Maybe take that video along and see if it shakes him up any. He's not going to fall for any of our tricks. He knows them all. Hey, you never know. Besides, he's not a cop anymore. We've got to stop treating him like one. Does that mean I got to stop treating him like a friend too? Buchanan asked. I know you don't want to think he's good for this, 
but you gotta put that out of your mind. If he's responsible for this, he's gotta go down for it like anybody else would. <sighs> I know. Remember, he chose this path on his own. We tried to help him. You tried to help him. We can't change what's already done. How much more time you want to spend on this? It's already been three weeks. Chase it down like you would any other case, Whitaker answered. Track it down until all the leads are expired. Once everything's been exhausted, if there's no other options, we'll move on to the next thing. Whitaker left the sergeant with those words, knowing he didn't really want to investigate any further in the event that Jacobs was the one responsible. But he also knew that Buchanan was a professional and good at his job and would do what was necessary and had to be done, no matter what that meant. Taking the captain's words to heart, Buchanan grabbed his tablet and loaded the surveillance videos on there to hopefully show Jacobs if he should run into him. Jacobs had been at his father's house for most of the morning. It had been several weeks since they'd seen or talked to each other. With Frazier, Steckenridge, and some others of Millette's maulers killed, Jacobs thought it was a good time to reconnect with his father. They'd mostly avoided any talk of the newsworthy events that Jacobs was involved in, though his father was aware of them. After being there for a few hours, Jacobs was getting ready to leave not wanting to stay for too long in case someone staked the place out, which was always an ongoing concern of his. Though Mr. Jacobs had tried not to talk about it, he couldn't resist the temptation of bringing it up before his son left. So, uh, I heard that the thugs who killed Val and the kids turned up dead a few weeks back. Jacobs looked uncomfortable hearing his father speak of it and turned his head away, not wanting to look at him. He feared his eyes or mannerisms would give it away, even if he didn't speak. Uh, yeah, I heard the same thing. You know what happened? Uh, no, not really. Just that they were killed or something. I'm not really too sure of the details. By his son's movements, Mr. Jacobs couldn't quite tell if he was lying or if he was just so uncomfortable talking about it that it made him nervous but he looked like a man who was trying to put it out of his memory. Not wanting to pester his son about it, Mr. Jacobs quickly tried to put the subject to rest. Well, I guess those sons of bitches got what was coming to them. Jacobs turned his head slightly back toward his father, only looking at him out of the corner of his eye. He just nodded at the statement, not really having anything else to add. Jacobs then went over to his father and gave him a hug. Come back soon, Mr. Jacobs said. Maybe next time give me a little heads up and Terry can swing over. I know he said he's been wanting to see you. Though Jacobs did miss his brother, he wasn't too keen on listening to what he figured he'd say. I don't really need any of his lectures. I don't think that's what he aims for. He knows you're off doing whatever it is that you think you need to. I think he just wants to see you. Okay, maybe next time. Jacobs grabbed his new coat and walked out of the house. As he walked down the driveway, he noticed a familiar-looking car parked in front of the house. Not knowing exactly what was about to go down, he put his right hand on the small of his back, just inches away from the handle of his gun that he had tucked inside his belt. Buchanan quickly exited his car once he saw Jacobs. Jacobs stopped in the middle of the driveway as Buchanan started walking up to him. Buchanan was slightly alarmed that his friend's hand was behind his back. It was a move that he sometimes did himself when he wasn't sure if he was going to pull his gun on a suspect. The fact that Jacobs was doing it now gave him pause and made him hesitate. The sergeant stopped in his tracks, not wanting to give Jacobs a reason to use it. It also made him think of what Jacobs was up to. If he thought he had to use a gun upon seeing him, Jacobs must have been up to something shady. After a few seconds pause, Buchanan continued his trek up the driveway, believing that Jacobs, no matter what he was up to these days, wouldn't come up shooting. 
Brett, you're a hard man to track down. Jacob shrugged. Why are you trying to track me down? I don't know. A few things, I guess. Wanted to ask you a few questions. See how you're doing, things like that. Oh, so what do you want to ask? Buchanan looked around, hoping for a better spot to talk instead of the middle of the driveway. How about we uh, sit down here, he asked, pointing to the curb at the end of the property. Jacobs brought his hand back around in front of him, assuming that he wasn't in danger at the moment. If there were more police officers behind him, he might have more cause for worry. But if Buchanan were coming to arrest him for the Fraser or Steckenridge killings, he doubted he would be coming alone. Although Jacobs honestly wasn't interested in anything Buchanan had to say at the moment, he still obliged him and followed him to the end of the driveway. Buchanan sat down on the curb, tablet in hand, and Jacobs joined him only a few seconds later. So, how are you? Buchanan asked. Hanging in there. Good. You know, I waited at your house for a few hours several times in the past week, including this morning. So? Seems like you're very busy. Doesn't even seem like you're there. You know, just got a lot on my plate these days, Jacob said. Oh yeah? Like what? Well, just trying to keep busy with different things. Those things wouldn't happen to involve Millette's Maulers, would it? No, why? I don't know if you've heard, but Lucky Fraser was found dead a few weeks ago. Jacobs didn't immediately respond, not wanting to give himself away at all. Uh, no, no, actually I didn't hear. Buchanan didn't believe it. He knew a fake answer when he heard one. In his mind, Jacobs didn't say it with any conviction. Yeah, some apartment over top of bar. Well, if you're looking for sympathy or something like that, you came to the wrong place. Nah, not looking for sympathy. Just answers. Well, I don't have any of those for you. Thought maybe you could help me with something. Okay. Buchanan turned on his tablet and started loading up the video from the bar. We have this feed from outside the bar that night. Thought maybe you could loan me your expertise. What can I tell you? Well... I just want you to take a look at it. You've looked at it a hundred times and can't make heads or tails out of it. Was just hoping for a fresh perspective on it. Jacob shrugged, not really wanting to look at it out of fear of what he might see, namely himself. But he agreed to look at it anyway, mostly out of curiosity. Once the video started playing, Buchanan handed the tablet over. As Jacobs intently watched it, Buchanan studied his face, hoping to see some kind of clue on it. After it was done, Jacobs handed the tablet over, slightly relieved that his face wasn't captured in the video. See a problem? Buchanan asked. Jacobs had a non-committal look on his face. No, really? No? Buchanan played the video again. See that guy right there? He said pointing to the back of Jacob's head in the picture. Yeah? Well, we think he might have had a hand in it. Why do you think that? Jacobs asked. Well, he's coming from the back of the bar where the shootings happened. So were a lot of other people. He's the only one walking. Like he's not the least bit concerned about what's going on, Buchanan said. Everyone else heard gunshots and started running away. But this guy, he's walking away calmly like nothing ever happened. Maybe he's just a calm person. Could be. I don't see a gun in his hand, Jacob said. No, and we don't see his face either. Looks like you've got a lot of work on your hands if this is all you got. Now you see my problem. No other leads? Buchanan shook his head. No, and no witnesses either. Looks like you're barking up the wrong tree. You don't happen to know this guy, do you? What makes you think I might know him? Buchanan started laughing. <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. What's that? Uh, some of the boys downtown think that it looks a lot like you. Jacobs let out a fake laugh. Like me? 
Really? He grabbed the tablet from Buchanan's hand and looked at the picture one more time. Yeah, I guess it does a little. Buchanan figured he should finally ask the question that was ruminating around in his mind. You know I have to ask this. Is it you? Jacob stared at him for a few moments. A fleeting thought ran through his mind that maybe he should just get it out in the open and admit that he was the one who did it. Part of him wondered what Buchanan would do if he admitted it. Would he arrest him for it? Or, out of friendship, would he pretend that he didn't know a thing about it? Part of Jacobs really wanted to say that it was him. He didn't like lying to his friend and trying to put something over on him. But they were on two opposite sides now. No, it's not me, Jacobs finally said brushing aside any thoughts he had about coming clean. Buchanan nodded, accepting the answer, even if he wasn't sure it was the truth. You can see how some of us would think it is. Yeah, I mean, the similarities are there, but I'm afraid you got the wrong guy. You know, another group of Millette's men got gunned down at one of his warehouses. Seven of them. Yeah. I think you told me something about that before. Oh, yeah, I remember now, Buchanan said. Gets to be you forget who you talk to about everything. Gets to be a lot. You haven't happened to have heard anything about anything else going down, have you? Like what? I don't know. Just wondering if this is all there is. What else do you expect? Jacobs asked. I'm not sure. It just... Seems as if someone's targeting Millette's men. Well, I know one thing's for sure. What's that? He's still got a lot left. If someone...